Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for One Piece Chapter 1044. When we last left our heroes, uh, thanks to our mysterious unnamed CP0 agent uh, grabbing Luffy from behind, Kaido was able to get a direct hit on Luffy, and Luffy lost. We have a whole, you know, battle on the rooftop, Kaido versus Luffy, winner Kaido thing happened. Uh, Kaido takes out the CP0 guy in revenge for losing that, that fair fight. Uh, but then he goes down, he's not going to really, really like dwell on that, and declares victory over the Allied forces, set, tells Momonosuke to come and be killed by him to officially end the battle. Um, um, various people, everyone reacts in various ways. Law, interestingly enough, seems to sense Luffy's voice being lost, implying that maybe Law has some connection to the voice of all things. Um, Nami protests at the idea that Luffy could lose, and she nearly takes a full-on blast breath attack from, from Kaido before being saved by Marco. Uh, meanwhile, Momo is considering surrendering to Kaido, but Yamato tells him not to, because if they surrender, all that awaits is a slower death. So let's just, you know face our deaths with pride and then Zanisha contacts uh, Momo telling him that Joy Boy has, is truly fully here and we see Luffy grinning and this mysterious substance coming off of his body and that's where we left off so with that said let's dive right on into chapter 1044 Warrior of Liberation our cover here is German 66's Ah, the Motionless Excursion, Volume 8. Mama's away on her trip. Begin the experiment. And we see, um, I think this is Niji and Yonji, uh, who are still strapped to the book. Um, I don't remember experimentation being a big part of, of Whole Cake, but we see a bunch of, of the Charlotte siblings with, like, surgical masks and gloves and knives. They're going to cut up uh, Niji and Yonji somehow, though I don't remember enough about them to know what exactly, what exactly that would look like. Anyway, um, we pick up with Zanisha, it looks like, uh, still behind the, the marine ships. And someone asks, what happened to me? Why can I still stand, even though I lost? I'm having fun for some reason. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And that seems to be that seems to be coming from Luffy now that we can see him. Um, and Momo sort of freezes at, at what Zunisha revealed last week. But it does look like Luffy is conscious again. Um, after whatever the hell happened in last chapter's cliffhanger. And Momo reacts, Luffy's Joy Boy? And Yamato questions, is that what Zunisha is saying? Um, then we cut to the left brain tower. Uh, where Sanji is still recuperating after his fight with Queen, and he just jolts awake. Uh, the, the courtesan tending him reacts, Eek! You, you're awake, Sir Pirate! And Sanji also seems to hear what Luffy slash maybe Joy Boy is saying. Luffy? And then at the performance floor, uh, we see everyone seems... Maybe can everyone hear Luffy now? In some way, like, I don't know. Is Luffy just being really loud? Or is this connected to the voice of all things? Because we see Kid and Law both react. And last chapter, again, implied that Law might have some connection to the voice of all things. But also we have Hyogoro. Oh, is that you, Straw Hat fellow? Uh, and Marco also hears it. Straw Hat? Hey, he's still breathing. And Nami and Tama just like hug each other or like weeping at this, at this reveal. It's still unclear how they've all worked that out. Luffy's alive! Big Brother's still breathing! They're just like, you know, they just like can't even talk straight with through like through the tears. Um And then we come to to Mari Joa. The Hall of Power, Pangea Castle. Have we known that name before? I'm gonna check the wiki real quick, see if we've ever heard the name Pangea Castle. Because that sounds new to me. Uh, Pangea, of course, is the, the, the super continent in, in world history before all the continents drifted apart. And I'm curious if we've ever heard the name before, because that feels like an important thing to note. But I have no memory of that name ever being said. Um, oh, no, this little bit of trivia says that uh, Volume 91 has an SBS. 
uh, where Oda confirms that Pangea's castle, Pangea's name obviously comes from the supercontinent. So I guess we have known that. It's just sort of a of a news to me kind of thing. Uh, I'm guessing this is this is where the, the, the five elders are. So we've lost an elite agent and made Kaido angry. What was the point? Uh, and and one of the, the other elders tells him, what if I told you there was a potential future that would make us beg for this outcome? It is always better to eliminate dangerous variables. And another elder comments, in every era, the world government has attempted to recover the gum gum fruit, and not once has it ever succeeded. For 800 years. Okay, so, um... That does sort of re- eliminate any remaining doubt that the gum gum fruit is the fruit they were talking about when Zanisha first showed up. Um, mm. But also that, like, there was... Letting Luffy live would have been a worse outcome than what's happening now. At least at least to the, to the world government, at least. Um, and then another one of the elders comments, It is as though the devil fruit is trying to escape our grasp. And another one... And it very well might be. Zoan fruits contain a will of their own. And this particular fruit has the name of a god. Wait, is... But this isn't a Zoan fruit, is it? The other name of the gum gum fruit is... The Zoan type, human human fruit. Mythical type, model Nika. Okay. Tying into to the whole thing with who's who... And we have this, the same image of Nika laughing in the... Or that actually might be Luffy laughing in the same sort of pose we saw when we were first introduced to the concept of Nika. But this might be at Onigashima. Like, actually, not, not, like a, not like a metaphorical image the five elders are conjuring, but like an actual... That's Luffy right now. As he laughs. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Possessing a body with the properties of rubber and fighting in whatever way he fancies. Bringing smiles to the faces of the people. The warrior of liberation also known as Nika the Sun God. Awakening brings his rubbery body great, brings his rubbery body greater physical strength and freedom. It is said that in all the world, there is no power more ridiculous. Okay. Um, all right. So, damn. <laughs> all right. Um... One of those moments that changes changes everything. I think is willing to. We're will, I think we can say. So, Nika. Nika, without a devil fruit, had a rubber body. That's what the, I'm, trying, I'm trying to like get to like the more more nitty gritty stuff first. Um, just like naturally. So, what kind of person was Nika? Or was Nika real? You know, they call him a god, which might imply he's he's not just some guy who once existed. But the Zoan fruit, Zoan type fruit doesn't tend to take after species, not people. But if Nika is just a person, what does that mean for what devil fruits are? Right? You know, it's one thing for, for a devil fruit to give you the powers of of you know, a, a human, like, like, isn't, isn't the human, human fruit, um, chopper's fruit anyway? Do, do I have that right? That, that sounds right to me. Uh, let me do a quick, the quickest of, of searches. Um, um, yeah, yeah, he has, chopper is the one with the, the baseline human, human fruit. And humans are a species. It's one thing for a fruit to give you the properties of a human or of a leopard or of a, of a brontosaurus or whatever. It's another thing for it to give you the properties of a particular person. So what does that mean about what the devil fruits are? You know, in a, in a broader broader sense, what are devil fruits? I don't know. It's one of those reveals that tra- kind of changes everything. Um, I mean, obviously, the fact that, it, that it's not the gum gum fruit at all, of course, changes everything. But like, I don't know. Like, the implications are so vast here. I haven't even gotten into, you know, I, I've seen some complaints um, as this as this twist was sort of built up. The idea that like giving Luffy this all important fruit kind of diminishes the fact that Luffy is just some guy, and the way that like Naruto and Sasuke being the reincarnations of of Indra and Ashura kind of, you know, 
um, belittle, especially in Naruto's case, belittle the kind of, of hard work ethic that the show sort of promoted before that. And I don't know. I, I can sort of see that being a thing here. But also the hard work, the whole like coming from nothing thing is not as big a thing in One Piece as it was in Naruto. I mean, even Luffy as like a, a famous admiral for a grandfather, the leader of the revolutionaries for a father. He's not some coming from nothing kind of guy. So it doesn't bother me as much here, I think. I don't know. So then in all the world, there is no power more ridiculous. Uh, and then we cut to just like randomly changing back to the treasure repository where Hiyori and Orochi are. As Orochi is just begging for his life. <laughs> Hiyori, I, I loved Odin too, you know. Think carefully now. This is such bullshit. No one's ever going to buy this, Orochi. I, I was being used by Kaido. Come, let's escape his wrath together. Now undo the nails after you have kicked dirt upon, um, uh, and, and then Orochi counters, after you have kicked dirt upon every samurai to whom you owed a debt, who do you expect will listen to you now? My father upheld his promise to you, did he not? Going back to like, the dancing in the streets naked thing, he, dr he trusted in the deal that, you made, that he made with you and Kaido to liberate Wano. For five long years, my father danced and made a fool of himself never once explaining himself to his own family. All the time, she's just so casually strumming on the shamisen. My father kept his word. And just like the ferocity there, Orochi freezes uh, as, as she goes on. He believed that you would free the people in the end and withstood one hour of your boiling cauldron. He withstood the searing burns of the bubbling oil, despite the smile that never left his face. He bore your torments all alone. Because the entire country was taken hostage. His suffering was unimaginable. She's just, like, we can even see her, like, trembling with rage as she relates this back to Orochi. Uh, and she, we, we move into flashback, as I'm assuming Orochi asks, What's the matter, Hiyori? And Hiyori asks, Doesn't it feel bad when everybody says mean things about you, father? Not at all, my dear. Why not? Because I have all of you. Uh, and we see, like, the young Hiyori, like, with, with like, hope in her eyes. Really? Then we'll be together forever. Yeah, that's not going to work out. Um, but Hiyori goes on. A oh, no, this is actually, this is Orochi. Actually, I realize now that Odin was a great samurai. In fact, speaking as Shokin, I think your father deserves... And Hiyori's mask falls. And we see her face. Um, tears is flowing in anger. My name is Kozuki Hiyori. Hold your tongue, you knave. Like, reclaiming her status as, like, the actual, um, and, like, the actual, actual royal family, so to speak, of, of Wano, tells Orochi to shut the fuck up. And Orochi, like, panics, yeep! No matter the growling of my empty stomach and the rags I had to wear, I never shamed my father's name. You were never shogun. Not even for a single day. Wicked, foolish, and wretched. The worse you became, the greater the insults of the lives that were lost. And she's just, like, casually walking towards Orochi now. Oh, whoa, 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 hey, not so fast. Don't do anything rash now. Uh, but he, oh, no, this is, this is uh, still Orochi, like, begging for his life. Revenge is antiquated. It's behind the times. And killing me won't make it any easier to beat Kaido. I mean, you're not wrong, but, like, this is full, full just, like, begging. You know, full shame here. Mm. Uh, and then... That last little little wisp of, of Kazenbo appears. There was one little bit that I guess didn't get taken out by Big Mom earlier. Lord Orochi. Hmm? I have failed. Uh, and so, so Orochi's line here, is that Conjuro? Okay, so I guess, did Conjuro like put his soul into Kazenbo? Is that what happened? Because I figured Kazenba was, like, not even really sentient. was just sort of, you know, programmed, so to speak, to, to go down to the, the repository and blow it all up. Or to, or to the armory, I mean. But maybe that is, like, Kanjuro's soul in there. But Kazenbo just comments, I am spent. And Orochi tells him, no, perfect timing. I give you a new play to perform. Burn that woman to death. They bond our clothing. Whoa, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, again, that whole, that whole banging for forgiveness thing, full bullshit. We'll call it the failure of the woman's 20-year revenge. Alas, what a tragic tale. 
Witness the plight of Hiori, remnant of the Kozuki name. This is the fate of all who were once mighty. But Kazenbo just sort of comment, sort of, I think, approaches Orochi, Lord Orochi. Fwah, hey, no, not over here. But then he lights Orochi on fire. Okay, that's not very Conjuro-esque. But uh, Orochi just screams, yeah! And he already watches all this. The dawn is sure to come. Conjuro, you idiot! Help me, Hiyori! Yow! And she's not going to do anything. The Kozuki clan always keeps its promises. And then we cut back to the roof. Um, with the moon still rising, that same doot da 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 that was like playing all over the earlier scene with Luffy. Um, and then Luffy is just like dancing around, feeling that weird heartbeat, that doom da da da. Ooh, I can do everything I wanted to do. I think I can fight a bit longer. My heartbeat sounds so funny. I don't know what's going on with the heartbeat, because the heartbeat is the same thing that, like, that, that, Zunisha, that Zunisha called out as, like, the drums of liberation or whatever. This is the pinnacle of what I can do. This is Gear 5. All right, I mean, I, I mean, Luffy doesn't even, like, know the whole thing with the human-human fruit. He thinks this is just, this is just another power-up. So here we are. Gear fucking five. Uh, and we see the... We're back in, like, in the in the dome as the roof starts to, like, crack and, like, the, this, like, lightning comes down as everyone screams, ah! And Hyogoro just looks up, huh? And the pirates are... are the, the, the beast pirates are all kind of scared. No, no, not scared. They're filming at the mouth. That's Conqueror's hockey. Uh, and Kaido looks around. What is it, Ben? And then he hears this thud, thud. And he looks up, a little panicky even. What is up there on the roof? And it comes down uh, as everyone freaks out. Hey, what's wrong? Is that Conqueror's hockey? Where's it coming from? And yeah, we see, you know, these tires left and right, foaming, falling over. And then a hand bursts down large enough to grasp Kaido's giant, you know, fish form in one hand, everyone panics. Whoa! And everyone can tell. And you know, we see, we see Law acknowledge that. Uh, Kid questions Straw Hat, and Choppers is wailing. Is that Luffy? And we see Luffy's grin, still with that weird slimy substance falling down his face. And he pulls Kaido up through through the hole in the roof. Kaido's like so panicked, his eyes. He has like the the cartoon like eyes. Are, are still where he was a, a second ago. As, as the non as like the conscious beast pirates all react, um, Kaido? And Luffy just pulls Kaido out through, out onto the roof again. Um, and we see he sort of, he's, he's gripped Kaido around, sort of like in like, the, what would be the crook of his, his elbow, but he's also like circular at this point. He's not really an elbow. And with his, with his other hand, he's, like, flexing. He's got this, like, cartoony giant bulge there. Rawr! And then we see our first real glimpse at Luffy's face in Gear 5. And there's not a whole lot we can tell. Beyond that, he's just, he's just grinning like crazy. Uh, but his hair is, like, white or light-colored. It's black and white. So it could be, like, like, yellow or bright red or something. But it has this sort of flame effect going on. And then Luffy just starts spinning Kaido around like a fucking lasso. And then we see him. Um, his, his body, by the way, looks a good bit like his, his like base gear four form. The sort of very circular torso and the little legs. Uh, but he just starts whacking Kaido left and right. Um, like with gear five, I've, I don't want this to be like super easy. I don't want it to be Luffy has a new power up out of nowhere and then just demolishes Kaido. But that is kind of what's happening here, it looks like. Mm. And Kaido hits the ground, and Luffy is just exuberant. You know, it's important to know that grin has not left his face since he turned Gear 5. Which, given... Um, let me go back to the last page of, of 1043, right? Because it has the, um, the grin effect. Uh, and I remember seeing, I saw, like, that last panel of Luffy, I mean, it has a grin effect. And I saw, I think, uh, a bit of one of the, the fan scanlations that specifically commented that the word grin 
Um, the, it's being translated from, I think, Nika, which, you know, is kind of relevant given everything going on in this fight right now. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, Luffy is still just grinning like a madman. Kaido, there, there really is this kind of cartoony quality to Gear 5, though. To the point when, like, Kaido's knocked around. It looks like he has, like, the cartoon bump on his head and, like, stars circling around him. It's very cartoony. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, but Kaido just notes, Straw Hat, you survived. Thank you. And Kaido's just, like, he's, he's happy the fight wasn't really taken out by, by CP0. But he goes right back on the attack. Blast Breath! And uh, Luffy, like, falls over from laughing or something. Ah, ha, 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 ha. And he gets back up, and his eyes also do that same cartoony shock thing that Kaido did earlier. Like, something about Luffy's new form is, like, fucking around with physics like this. I don't know. Which, actually, going back to what the Elder said. Going back to what the Elder said about possessing a body with the properties of rubber about Nika, I'm thinking about that sort of like, like 1930s, like Betty Boop style animation with like all the like, the, like the, the hose arms. That sort of is what Nika, what Gear 5 gives off. I don't know. Um, but Luffy sees the blast breath approaching him in this like mock panic. And he grabs the ground below him and pulls the ground up. To deflect the blast breath. Uh, go! And it does reflect right back at Kaido. Hits him full on. And we see Luffy still just laughing like a madman. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. As we see the titular Gear 5 appearing below Luffy. Uh, and Kaido, still alive, tells Luffy, I'm sorry about that idiot earlier. I didn't want to win that way. And Luffy tells him, don't sweat it. Let's finish this up. To be continued. Okay. Uh, so no hiatus next week. We are back next Sunday. Um, but God. Where do I begin with this chapter? Where do I, where do I start? You know? Um, I mean. On the one hand. There's the fact that like everyone can hear Luffy somehow. Which feels like a voice of all things kind of thing. Because uh, Luffy doesn't seem that loud. I'm talking about the, those first couple of pages. He doesn't seem that loud uh, in those, those that first page. Like, nothing about the way that's, that's drawn, those speech bubbles are drawn, the way the font is, nothing about it seems to stress he's, like, yelling, you know? So maybe somehow Luffy has tapped in all of his allies to the voice of all things. Like, Kaido clearly doesn't know yet because everyone else is clearly aware that it's Luffy. Hyogoro is like... Is that you, Straw Hat fellow? Sanji's clearly aware of it as Luffy. Marco, Nami, Tama. We can presume Kid and Law, though they don't quite say anything. But Kaido clearly doesn't. He still questions on page uh, page 11 what is up there on the roof. And he doesn't realize that Luffy is alive until... Or he doesn't have time to like, comment on it until page 15 with Straw Hat, you survived. Um, he maybe realizes it once Luffy grabs him. But still, he doesn't know it till he sees Luffy is my thing. So that's all sort of really, really interesting. I don't know what the hell is going on with Gear 5. You know, Gear 5 is just so sudden. So, it's so, it's just a really sudden development there. I don't quite know what to make of it. I don't know. I mean, it's important from like a lore standpoint. There's no way we're not going to get to the bottom of what exactly is going on with Mika now. But we know that like, that's the fruit that Luffy ate. Way back at the beginning. Other question that raises, though, did Shanks know that? Did Shanks know it was his mythical fruit? Or did he think it was just some random paramecia? Um, I don't know. I have, to go, I have to, A, go back to, like, that first chapter again. Though also it's perfectly possible Oda did not have this planned out in chapter one. Um, but, like, I don't know. I, I just don't know. What do we make? I'm curious what, what everyone else is thinking about the Nika thing, because again, I haven't seen the sort, sort of like, sort of like complaints of the idea that like it's important that Luffy has his real minor devil fruit, and it doesn't bother me. Like like I said, it's it's not quite akin to the like 
to the Indra and Ashura twist in Naruto, which really felt like it came out of left field. And, like, it sort of went against the themes of the earlier parts of the series. Um, and this doesn't seem to be as opposed to that. Because, uh, like, Luffy was never this, like, come-from-nothing guy. I, not, at least not in my opinion. Not after we found out about Dragon and Garp. Um, but, yeah, then, like, the fight's just... It's so cartoony. I'm, I'm really curious what everyone else is thinking about that. Because it really does feel like we move into a whole different kind of story. You know, even with, like... like I mentioned the, the eyes following Kaido as he's pulled up onto the roof... And with Luffy, when he's, like, shocked about the blast breath coming towards him. But also when, when Luffy is spinning Kaido around, like, a rope, you can see the eyes are, like, also sort of following Kaido. It's a real interesting transition there. I don't really know what to make of it. Um, I don't know. Gear 5 is a thing now. Uh, also, there's, there's the Hiyori bit. The Hiyori bit is really good. Even if Kazembo burning uh, Orochi is a little weird. I don't really know what's going on with that. And then it's tied with that Hiyori line, the Kozuki clan always keeps its promises. What promise is she referring to? I'm not sure. Because, um, I mean, possibly, if you count Kanjiro, even, even as part of the act, as one of Odin's retainers, maybe that counts as him being in the the... Kozuki clan and maybe therefore even if he like mockingly even if he intending to be a lie swore allegiance to the Kozuki maybe there's something about the Kozuki clan that binds him to that it doesn't make much sense from a practical standpoint but maybe that's what's going on there I don't know maybe maybe he's, he's just like got a little bit of of uh life left like he's not very like smart he's just a little bit of consciousness in Kazenbo and so he doesn't really have the intelligence to listen to to Orochi he just goes to his master again it might be as simple as that either way I think that really is the final end of Orochi for good this time though he's had about three or four final ends before this now this feels like it's it um I don't know though but yeah then we have gear five and Luffy's just fucking giggling. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know what we're doing with Gear 5. Uh, but I can't wait to find out because this really is just one of those, you know, nothing is the same anymore kind of chapters. That's just, it's just kind of exhilarating to, to witness in real time. Um, so I can't wait to see how all this plays out. But with that said, I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe. You know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!